I like this to turn in your scriptures to Jonah chapter 2, verse 1 through verse 10. That is Jonah chapter 2, verse 1 through 10. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. And he said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me, and out of the belly of hell I cried, and thou heardest my voice. Thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas. The floods compassed me about, and all the billows and all the waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again towards thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul, the depths of the clothes me around about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption. O oh, my Lord, my God, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pray that I have, that I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. In the last few weeks, we've been talking about God's kingdom versus Satan's kingdom. And we understand that Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand. But Satan, the power of darkness and all his imps are in a battle to set up kingdoms in our life. So we will not think of the kingdom of God that is at hand for us, for us for to call on for his mercy and grace. Now, the thing I want to look at today is health. God's kingdom wants us to be in good health. And then Satan's kingdom is, wants us to be in infirmity. We need to look at the definitions of these two words. Well, first, health is a is a state of complete physical, mental, and emotional wellness. God wants us to be well in all aspects. The second is Satan's kingdom, which is infirmity, physical, mental, or emotional weakness. So we see the balance here that we have. God wants us to be well, and Jesus, uh, Satan wants us to be infirmed. Now, I started out in reading in the book of Jonah. Jo Jonah was in a circumstance, and we see that he was down, and his thought pattern was so much that he, because of his affliction, he wasn't able to ache, think straight. Well, I want to look at something that kind of jumped out at me. When it said in Jonah 2, 5, the waters compassed about me, even to the soul. The depths closed about me, and the weeds were wrapped around my head. Well, the thing I want to talk about today is that Jesus wants to be well in our mind. He wants us to have spiritual strength. He wants us to have abundant life, but he wants us, our thoughts, to be pure and holy. But Satan wants to bring in, infirmity in our lives. He wants us to be able to think other things, think vain imaginations and things that are corrupt in our mind. He wants to get our mind so cluttered that we lose to thinking on things of God and the purpose that God has direct us to have. Well, in that verse 5, it said, and the weeds were wrapped around my head. 
And just imagine the weeds just wrapped around his head, right around his forehead. And it be that tight pressure on his mind. And sometimes we have to understand that our minds can be so cluttered that we feel this tightness right there, that we have so much tightness in our mind that we're not able to think straight. Now, in the scriptures, it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Well, this is where our battlefield is in our mental capabilities, our way we think. That's the reason why he tells us that we need to capture every thought that that we have these vain imaginations that come on us and we need to capture those thoughts unto the obedience of Jesus Christ. So we see here that he had this on and all he could think about is how he was so down at the bottom of the depths of the sea that there was no way out and that it is just, it gripped his mind. Well, sometimes we're in situations in our life uh, that our mind is almost like we have something wrapped around our forehead that we cannot think straight. We cannot think straight. We think of all the negative that he was thinking about. I've been in the bottom of the oceans. I'm just, I'm here. And it's just, there's so much in my life is going to fall apart. And this is the, what is Satan wants to bring infirmity in our minds. And we have to understand that a lot of times we go through circumstances and our minds go away from what God wants the plan for us to have. So when we look at this, that we see that scripture says, as a man think of his heart, so is he. And so it clouds our thinking. When we think negative thoughts, what happens? Negative thoughts happen. Job talked about what we fear we become. So we come on and we look at this, and but we have to understand that Job, first of all, that, that, that I mean, Jonah, Jonah, first of all, that he called out to God. He called out to God for his stinking thinking or the thing of doom and despair that he had, and he called it out. And then he came to the reality that God heard him. And this is the thing that we have to understand. Satan wants to put this infirmity in our minds that we're not, that God does not hear us. And he wants to keep us to have our thinking away from God, but looking at the situation. So what we need to understand is God wants us to look to him in all things and call out to him. Now, if we look at different scriptures at this here, we look at 1 Peter 2.24, and we have to understand what God's promises are for us. In 1 Peter 2.24, who is for our own self bear our sins in his own body, and that's Jesus, on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live righteous by whose stripes we were healed. So we have to understand that he not only wants to heal our physical bodies, but he wants to heal our thinking. And if we don't watch out that when we get our thinking askewed, that it sets up that we fall into the kingdom of Satan that he'll bring infirmities, that sickness in our mind, but also it goes into sickness of our body. Well, we can look at Jonah here, that he finally came to realization that he prayed to God and God heard him. Well, sometimes we get to the place in our life that we don't think God hears us at all. Well, as Psalms 43, 5 says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? That, that's a question that the psalmist is saying. Why? Why? Why is my soul cast down? Why is my will? Why is my emotions, my mind, why are they so cast down? Why? And then we, we, then we get to the point of questioning God in the rest of that verse. And why art thou disquieted within me? Why are we? Why don't you listen to me? I'm crying out to you. And these are things that in our mentality, in our mind, and the way our stinking thinking is that we say, 
that God doesn't hear us. Well, the thing is, God hears every prayer. And what we have to understand is that we have to get into our faith and really being in the belief that he hears us even though we might not feel it. So we have to understand in our mind, we have to say he hears us. Well, we go on on that verse and it says that why have thou cast down, O my soul, why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise them who is the health of my countenance and my God. We have to get to the point that we don't lose hope and we don't lose hope in our thinking. We take that seaweed and that pressure that is on us that because of the situations that we're, we're having that we lose our hope. You know, we all go through situations in life that really gets our thinking disturbed and we just don't think straight. So we have to understand that our hope is that confidence with joy of expectations that he can clear our thought patterns and we have to change our way of thinking and capture those thoughts, those vain imaginations that come to obedience of Jesus Christ. And when we get that into our mind, things happen and we have that hope that, you know, we can endure, we will get through. And we take away those thinking that is contrary to what the kingdom of God wants us to have, which is life and more abundant. So we see that it is health. When we change our thinking and we have our hope and change our thinking of hopelessness into hope with the confident expectations, the joy, the confidence, the expectation that he has something good for our future. So we see that even our health changes. In fact, you can tell uh, sometimes when I don't feel well, people could come on and I, I come around me and they don't know that I'm sick and I'm feeling down and they'll, they'll come up to me and say, are you feeling all right? Well, my accountants showed it the way I they perceived me that there was something wrong in my body. Well, a lot of times in our mind, we don't really, people do not see that, but our mind will also project how we feel and it will go on the outside and people will notice it. And that's the reason why we have to learn to praise God, to praise God that we will show God no matter what that we're going through, we praise him because we know that even though we feel cast down, even when we don't feel like he's there, he does hear us. And when we get that into our thinking that says, a lot of people say, well, God never hears me. You know, I, I pray and all my prayers go up to the ceiling and baths. Bath. He hears you. You know, he says if we pray according to his will, that he hears us. Now, he hears us no matter what. So what we need to get into our mind, that when we pray, God hears us. Well, if we go to 3 John 1, 12, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that they may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. When we look in that soul, is that we, that's your mind, will, and emotions. But we have to understand that he wants to prosper in our health. He wants to have us a mental stableness in us. He wants us to be of sound mind. He did not give us a fear of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. So he wants to give us a sound mind to get all this thinking that say, look at the circumstance. Uh, look at, I'm, I'm the bottom of the ocean in the well, or, or we, all the things are, are so heavy on me. Uh, God, you don't understand the circumstance. I am. He does understand that. And he says, I want you to prosper even in your affliction, that you know that your hope will go forth. Well, we see that in Romans 8, 6, in Romans 8, 6, it says, for the cardly minded is death. What's he saying? When we start thinking only in the fleshly realm, instead of the spiritual land. See, 
you know, we walk in faith. We walk in the spirit. So we need to learn to think in the spirit. That God above all can do all things. So we see that when we get in our mind and our mind starts thinking these negative thoughts in us, that it means it gives our flesh will take over. It will take over and then after we understand that the flesh will eventually deteriorate. And if we keep reacting in the flesh and keep thinking in the flesh, we are going to decay. But when we think in the spirit and the rest of that verse says, but he that is spiritual minded, he that is spiritual minded is life and peace. Life and peace. That means when we look into the heavens and we look into God for their answers, instead of believing the lies of Satan that wants to bring the infirmity on us, that cause us to become sick, that cause us to become weak in our being and weakness in our mind. But we see that when we look to the God, the God of heaven, the God of the universe, that he will speak peace and he will speak peace and speak life into us. And that's that life that's more abundantly. Well, I want to go to another scripture that says in Proverbs 12, 25, Proverbs 12, 25 says, heaviness in the heart of man makes him stoop, but a good word makes him glad. Now we have to understand, we can look symbolism here that we see that you ever seen a person that is stooped over and then as they walk, they're just totally stooped over and this looking down and so forth. And so heaviness makes a man stoop. Otherwise, when we have our mind and we think on the heaviness of the circumstances that we're in, that we become stooped. Otherwise, it causes physical harms to our body, but it starts in our mind. It's that man think it's so is in his mind. Well, I was, there was a story that I, a little bit off the subject here, but a little story. There was an old man and he was stooped over and he just stooped over and he's just bent over and looking down all the time. And these young kids come out of church and they said, oh, there's this man, we need to go pray for him. And they run up to him and they start to pray for him because of his stoopness. And they said, oh, Lord, deliver him, make his mind clear. And Father, raise him up to, so he can stand up straight. And the man looked at him, he says, I, I don't have any infirmity. Years ago, I found $100 on the pavement and I picked it up. And ever since then, I've been looking down for another $100. Well, we see that that is a totally uh, off the wall thinking that he was going to get another hundred dollars. But see, that's also a thing in his mind that he wasn't looking for the things of God. He was looking for things in the flesh. But we see that, that a good word, which is the word of God, will make you glad. So when we start putting the word of God in our mind and let it come into our mind and change our way of thinking. Now, we have to watch how our mind reacts to things. We have to watch that what we put in our mind and what stays in the mind, because if we do not learn to forgive and we do not learn to release things off our mind and have a pure mind, it makes us become stooped and that heaviness will get us and move us to infirmity. So, and it actually affects us physically physically because of that heaviness, that, that the load that we should not carry. And that's the load of things that when we've been hurt and we keep hanging on that, we, when we have situations that we do, that heaviness keeps on us, but we have to change your mind. Years ago, when I was in my car wreck, that, you know, and I ended up losing a leg and I was 17 years old and I, you know, I had a lot of things before me. 
I could have been the type of person that said, well, I'm handicapped. I'm handicapped and I cannot move forward because I have an excuse because of circumstance. Too many people in life are handicapped in their thinking, not because the physical handicap, but physical, uh, mentally handicapped, they're hanging on to things, circumstances, what people have said, circumstances have, they might be abused and they keep ha ha hanging on it instead of taking that heaviness and giving it to God and say, God, forgive me of this. But we have to understand, handicap is in the mind. I have been able to endure. I've been able to do many things. I've coached a basketball team that took second in the state. I've been able to do other things that physically, because I never said handicap. I could have, I could have went on welfare and everybody said, well, he went through a, such a tragedy that he, he, he just can't handle it. Well, we have to understand that's what Satan wants to do. He wants to tell you how bad you are or what other people have done to you. So you become handicapped in your mind and that you will not go forward. So we have to ask for forgiveness of all the things that have been done to us or also say, Lord, give me the strength. Give me the strength to endure. Now, we look at this that we have to release heaviness off. And we have to say the burdens of this life are light. As I've talked about before, is that, you know, that we all will come across momentary light afflictions. But with me, that I have learned, that I paraphrase it, is that he tells me that these are just momentary setbacks or pauses of life to say, will I trust him or not? So we have to understand that Satan wants to make us infirmed to have mental weakness. Mental weakness. And so we have to understand this. Well, we go to Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. It says, be not conformed to this world, but ye be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So every day we have to fight battles in the mind. The battlefield is in the mind and we have to understand that we need to remind, renew our mind. Otherwise, every day renew means make new again. So every day we have to choose that we're not gonna let the things of the past, situations of the past, people that have said things to us, and that we will be able to think straight so we can hear the voice of God. It's just like Noah here, that he was in there and he prayed, but then he realized that he needed to go through praise. And he went through praise, and so he was released. And all, then all of a sudden, the, the will of God, the fish, spit him up on the thing. But you got to realize, what was the first, why was he in the well in the first place? It's because he was disobedient and not doing what the will of God was in the first place. So every day we need to say, Lord, let me know what my, your will is for my life today. Let me know what that will is and repent of when we're not following his will. So we understand here that here Satan is wants us to have stinking thinking wants to, us to hold on unforgiveness in our mind, put hatred in our mind, put that in bitterness in us so strong that we're not able to go forth and not think about, well, God has such a perfect plan for me. God, I praise you that you have helped me endure and you're, you are my strength. You are my strength. And you give me a sound mind, a sound mind. And so this is what we have to understand is that we need to understand that God wants the best for us. He wants us to have a mental attitude. Actually, he wants us to have a mental aptitude 
that we do not think of our circumstances down here, but we think of his, have, think of him in heavenly places where all blessings come and flow. So we change our stinking thinking, we renew our mind, not transformed to what's in the world, but, but renewing of our mind daily that we that we totally change. We're not conforming to the world, but we're transforming ourselves into the image of Jesus Christ and renew our mind daily. And that way we have peace, we have joy, we have a strong mind to hear the will of God. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you that you loved us so much. But Father, let us destroy those kingdoms of Satan in our thought patterns. Father, that Satan's going to attack our mind and he wants us to think on those vain imaginations and get our thoughts off of you, Lord. But Father, help us to renew our mind daily. Make it new every day. And all the things of the past are gone. They are forgiven. And Father, help us to walk in victory with clearness of mind. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.